Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Susan Valakis, and I'm the Training Development Coordinator at NOW. And as such, I bring you these webinars on the third Thursday of each month. If you've missed any of them, you can find replays on our website, nowfoods.com forward slash webinars, or on the NOW YouTube channel. If you have questions during today's presentation, please use the chat bubble that you see on your screen, submit your question, and we will respond directly to you with an answer by email. So today's presentation will last about one hour, and it is presented by one of NOW's very own, Neil Levin, who serves as our Senior Nutrition Education Manager at NOW. He's also a nationally board-certified clinical nutritionist with a Diplomat in Advanced Nutritional Laboratory Assessment, in case you were ever wondering what the DANLA stands for. There you go. Neil is also a professional member of the International and American Associations of Clinical Nutritionists and also a member of the Scientific Council of the National Clinical Nutrition Certification Board. He serves on the board of directors of the Mid-American Health Organization, or MAHO as you may know it. And for our team at NOW, he provides a wealth of knowledge when it comes to nutrition and dietary ingredients. And as usual, Neil has some excellent information to share with us today. So with that, please join me in welcoming Neil Levin to wrap up our series on the wonderful world of herbs. Welcome, Neil. Well, thank you very much, Sue, and thanks everyone for joining us today. Glad to have you with us. And uh, just so you know, I have some clue what I'm talking about. Some of my credentials are on this slide. I'm not gonna linger here. And we're gonna get right into the herb and botanical categories. Uh, these are the remaining categories uh, in part three that we haven't addressed in parts one and two blood sugar, cardiovascular, detox, GI digestive, men and women's health, urinary. And there's a whole section of products with no claims that we're going to kind of go through quickly and uh, just talk about the products, uh, whatever we can say about them. But we're not actually making structure function claims on those particular products. So the first one is blood sugar support. And we have one product in that category within the uh, our catalog category, which is cinnamon. We of course have a whole section on blood sugar support in our catalog that we are dealing with separately. Uh, so cinnamon's a culinary spice, but it's also an herb. Uh, the, the cinnamon bark, uh, which is the part that's used, has free radical neutralizing pr properties. Uh, what lay people would typically call antioxidants, but unfortunately the FDA has restricted the term antioxidant to vitamins and minerals only, despite uh, decades and decades of use in medical journals and scientific journals. Uh, so these free radicals help support healthy balanced immune system response. Uh, the immune system actually uses uh, these antioxidant type compounds, these uh, free radical neutralizing compounds to uh, support immunity uh, because the immune system uses oxidative compounds and inflammatory compounds as demolition tools and as actual weapons against invasive organisms. And of course they have to be controlled uh, in order to avoid them going out of, out of uh, out of out of control, I guess would be the best way to say that. Uh, cinnamon bark also supports healthy glucose metabolism to maintain healthy blood sugar levels that are, are starting at, at healthy. You'll notice we list the genus and species here. The primary one we're going for is Cinnamonum virum, which translates to true cinnamon. And that's the one that you typically get from uh, Ceylon, Sri Lanka, and areas like that. Uh, the other forms, like the Burmese one and, and the other one here, uh, they are often cross-contaminated. Uh, kind of, kind of an odd term to use, but uh, we can't always get pure single-species cinnamon bark. Uh, they look very similar, and they're harvested by hand. And you could see where uh, some of the other species might sneak into there in small amounts. So we do disclose them on the label where other companies might label this simply as true cinnamon, cinnamonum virum. 
uh, we're a little more scrupulous in how we label in, in that regard. Uh, so cinnamon also can help support healthy serum lipid levels, uh, cholesterol, those kind of things, uh, supporting cardiovascular function and uh, glucose utilization, how we use sugar. And uh, cinnamon can actually mimic some of the effects of insulin and act kind of like an insulin. So that's an interesting thing as well. Uh, you know, that's another mechanism uh, that's available to cinnamon. Uh, cardiovascular support, we have several things here, which include uh, cayenne pepper, of course, uh, hawthorn, both berries and leaf and flower extract, and horse chestnut. So really three herbs, uh, different things there. Uh, so let's start with cayenne. Uh, cayenne, uh, this is actually something I personally take, uh, these cayenne caps. Uh, you take one capsule two to four times daily, preferably at the end of a meal. Uh, the main active component of there is called capsaicin which is used both topically and internally. And consumption of cayenne helps support cardiovascular as well as digestive functions. Uh, the Scoville heat units that you see on the supplement facts, uh, 40,000 heat units, is a standard measurement for heat in peppers, by the way. Anyone who eats hot peppers and pepper sauce is, is probably well aware of that. So uh, the Cleveland Clinic had some information about this. I put on this slide, uh, cayenne peppers help keep blood, pre blood vessels healthy, help maintain healthy blood pressure, uh, help digestion by producing the uh, gastric juices and enzymes in the stomach. And spicy foods like cayenne seem to also be able to support good bacteria in the GI tract, the healthy probiotics or gut microbiome. We also have the hawthorn. Uh, hawthorn comes in a leaf and flower extract as well as the berries. And they have polyphenols and flavonoids, which are again, free radical fighting compounds. Uh, again, what would generically be called antioxidants, but not on labels. And there are free radicals caused by not only internal metabolic processes, but by environmental uh, contaminants that reach us, whether through air, water, food, whatever. So uh, vitexin is the flavonoid constituent that is the Hawthorne herb is typically standardized to, and it supports both healthy blood flow and the heart muscle itself. So here's a couple of products we have with Hawthorne that they're not the only things we have with Hawthorne extract. We have the uh, blood pressure health formula, for example that has Hawthorne extract along with a grapeseed extract. So, you know, there are other uses we're making of these, but these are the, the items where Hawthorne is the primary ingredient. And uh, you see on the left, we have the 300 milligram, and on the right, we have the 600 milligram, the double strength, uh, which we call extra strength. Uh, they both claim cardiovascular support, supporting blood pressure already in the healthy range. You'll notice that the one on the left has Hawthorne berry in the base, filling the capsule, where the one on the right with a slightly longer capsule actually is all Hawthorne leaf and flower extract. And again, they're both standardized to the same percentage of Vitexin compounds, which is the active ingredient there. Uh, so again, it helps with the healthy blood flow, maintaining healthy blood pressure, and supporting a healthy heart contraction. There's another claim. So uh, all three parts, the leaf, flower, and berries have been used as tonics for the heart and the cardiovascular system. The Hawthorne uh, supports the muscle tone and the integrity of the blood vessels. It's also a powerful free radical scavenger. And the Vitexin compound and the other components support a healthy blood flow and maintaining a healthy blood pressure. So the Hawthorne extract not only protects the heart, but it has iotropic 
properties, which means uh, helping to strengthen the force of the muscle contraction of the heart. In other words, the heart can pump stronger. That muscle contraction that pumps the blood out of the heart is actually stronger when people are taking the Hawthorne extract. And that's a good thing. You're improving blood flow. You're maintaining a healthy blood flow by having the heart pump properly and having the heart have enough strength to do its job normally. Uh, the flavonoids, the uh, free radical fighting compounds, also have collagen stabilizing effects. Uh, many things that are free radical fighters do that. We see that for pycnogenol and rutin and a number of other uh, substances, uh, vitamin C itself, that support the collagen and stabilize collagen, which is what a lot of the blood vessel material is made of that uh, helps us keep a, a good integrity. There's a lot of stress on these blood vessels. Every time the heart pumps, the arteries nearest the heart have to actually dilate and pulse and let that blood come through, that there's a rush of blood coming in and it actually has to expand to let that in and to contract. It's doing that literally every second of the day. So there's a lot of stress on these and the free radical fighting components, the, these antioxidants and, and similar type compounds are responsible for helping maintain that integrity and protect these blood vessels so they can do their job as they're designed to do. And uh, the Hawthorne leaf and flower extract also works on cholesterol metabolism and the flow of bile from the gallbladder, uh, from the liver to the gallbladder, from the gallbladder to the digestive tract, Bile is used as a retrieval system for fats and fat-soluble nutrients from the digestive tract. So it is a digestive uh, component. And uh, there are studies showing that the Hawthorne leaf and flower extract is a good herb to use for healthy cardiovascular function, but also to enhance exercise tolerance. How much exercise can someone tolerate, especially if they're out of shape? the Hawthorne leaf and flower extract seems to have a role in that as well. And the next herb we have is called horse chestnut. Horse chestnut is an European herb. Uh, it contains rutin uh, as well in our formula, which we've added. Rutin, by the way, which a lot of people are not familiar with, is actually a compound made of quercetin. It's quercetin with a sugar attached. And some of the commercial Quercetin products that, that we buy, that the materials we buy to make our products are actually made of quercetin that's used by hydrolyzing rutin to separate the sugar and, and the quercetin component of the rutin. So even substances like uh, ginkgo contain rutin. So, you know, this is it's an interesting thing. Rutin's a very... Uh, popular, it's often lumped with the bioflavonoids, and uh, it's something I've formulated with since before I worked for this company. I've probably for, for about 30 years I've been formulating with rutin, so I really like that uh, material, and you often see it in vitamin C uh, complex formulas is where, where you'll often uh, notice it. But it does support the integrity of the vascular system and connective tissue uh, using these components. It's standardized to uh, triterpenoid saponins, uh, some specific ones, the, the ASKIN. And a systematic review that's cited by the National Institutes of Health said that horse chestnut seed extract can support proper blood flow in the veins located in the legs. So we've actually got a government uh, a, a affiliated agency that is recognizing the role of horse chestnut in supporting proper blood flow. The next category we have for herbs is detox support. And the only thing in this section, uh, the section of our catalog named herbs and botanicals uh, is called milk thistle, which is a source of silymarin. So we'll get into that now with a few slides. But just so you know, you're aware that we have a detox section in the catalog as well. And, and those formulas, such as our uh, liver support formula, 
also use the milk thistle uh, silymarin extract. So we have three silymarin formulas in this catalog section. On the left is the 150 milligram, uh, on the, in the middle is the 300 milligram, and on the right is the 450 milligram per uh, capsule. Uh, the one on the left has turmeric root added. Uh, turmeric root does contain uh, the turmeric extract, uh, curcumin, uh, but turmeric itself is soluble and curcumin is not. That's another topic for another day, but uh, just so you know, the curcumin in turmeric is soluble and well absorbed. And uh, there's typically between two and 9% uh, curcumin in turmeric root. Uh, when we concentrate it, we get that 95% curcuminoid material that's extracted and very insoluble. And you'll see all the strategies and different products uh, that help make it soluble again. But in turmeric itself, it, it is soluble. So that, that's an interesting thing to know that the, the turmeric root itself is effective and turmeric as a spice is, is very effective uh, in doing the things that the supplements do. So the one on the left has uh, two capsules giving you 300 milligrams of the silymarin extract. It's uh, standardized to 80% uh, flavonoids along with the turmeric. The one in the middle is double strength, uh, which includes a smaller amount of dandelion root and artichoke. And uh, those are a couple of things that dandelion leaf tends to be used for uh, kidney urinary tract. The dandelion root tends to be used more for uh, liver. And artichoke is used for liver, gallbladder. Uh, I will actually be talking about that uh, on another slide in the next section. That's actually the next uh, section we're gonna hit. And the one on the right, the formula with the 450 milligrams of silymarin labeled as extra strength does not have any additives because we put so much of this one ingredient in there. But also this is a soft gel using organic sunflower oil, sunflower lecithin, organic caramel color. Uh, you know, so it's a, it's a very nice formula and uh, does have a benefit of increased solubility. So why do we use silymarin? It improves glutathione production. Glutathione is the major circulating endogenous, uh, in other words, made in the body, antioxidant uh, that has antioxidant properties that is used to uh, as a free radical fighter in the body. Uh, glutathione is not just a supplement, but it's something that the body manufactures and uh, typically made from cysteine or NAC, N-acetylcysteine is, is the, uh, the limiting factor, but there's actually three amino acids in glutathione, but uh, the cysteine component is the, the most important in terms of how much you can make. Uh, so taking silymarin does promote the production of glutathione and glutathione enzymes that are used for liver detoxification. So studies show that Milk thistle extracts helps maintain healthy liver function by promoting glutathione production and uh, using the antioxidants, uh, as they would call them in medical journal, or the free radical fighters, as we would call them on labels, would support body detoxification. Uh, the phase one, phase two liver detoxification, part of that is done using glutathione and glutathione enzyme compounds. So. Yeah, you can see where there's a role for this, uh, for liver health. And uh, soft gels will improve solubility on that one form. So next we get into a fairly large category, GI and digestive support, and there's some overlap between all of them. And this includes uh, eight different botanicals, artichoke, cascara sagrada, ginger, oregano, peppermint, senna, slippery elm, and a combination called trifala, which really means three fruits. So we'll start with artichoke extract, which I mentioned was in one of the silymarin formulas. This is the artichoke extract by itself. It's standardized to a component called cinerin. It helps with healthy vascular function. It's a free radical scavenger. 
but it's also a digestive tonic. How does it work? It supports normal bile flow, which helps with fat digestion absorption. Uh, also helps with eliminating fat soluble metabolites from the liver after they have been detoxified and properly prepared through the phase one, phase two liver detoxification to be safely excreted. Uh, the water soluble ones go to the kidneys and go out through the urinary tract and we'll talk about uh, urinary tract in another section. But the fat soluble ones tend to go out through the bile and be dumped through the uh, bowel. So uh, artichoke extract has flavonoids, luteolin and apigenin that support healthy vascular system. Again, when you're talking about these free radical fighters, we're supporting the collagen, we're supporting the structures of the blood vessels themselves. Now, Cascara Sagrada is used as for herbal regularity and bowel function. Uh, it's only one capsule at bedtime with a glass of water. That's my cue to have a sip of water. Uh, only take the one capsule, do it for a week or no more. Uh, it should work over a very short period. It is used for to promote bowel regularity and uh, the National Institutes of Health Medline says that it possesses chemicals and they mean botanical compounds of course that stimulate the bowel and have a laxative effect. So there's an authoritative uh, National Institutes of Health statement on that. Uh, ginger root has been used for nausea and vomiting. Most of the studies use dietary supplements. This is another section that's uh, research that I got from the National Institutes of Health. Uh, and ginger may be helpful specifically for mild nausea and vomiting associated with pregnancy. And there, it, it also tends to be helpful for menstrual cramps. Ginger is typically, when it's standardized, standardized to a minimum of 5% gingerols. Our claim is temporary relief of upset stomach and digestive support, but there are other free radical quenching compounds in here. Now I'll point out that this particular formula, because it's 250 milligram, we filled the capsule with ginger powder. This is not an unusual strategy for our company. Uh, we've added ginkgo leaf powder to the ginkgo extract. Uh, uh, we, you know, we add things like that uh, frequently two formulas to round them out. We add the hawthorn berry to the hawthorn leaf and flower extract in, in one instance. Uh, again, as a natural base that's synergistic or at least perceived as synergistic. So that was the extract. Now this is the ginger root. It has not been extracted. Uh, and again, our label claim uh, helps with digestive uh, function. It helps maintain healthy GI flora, the microbiome or the probiotics. It helps digest fats and calm and soothe the digestive tract. You'll, you'll, that's one of the claims you'll see on ginger is that it helps with digestion. Uh, also may support healthy cardiovascular function and balanced immune system response and that's in relation to its free radical fighting components that again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the immune system uses uh, these type of components to control the weaponry and the, the destructive capabilities that it has. And uh, as part of its demolition repair uh, tools and healthy cardiovascular function again by uh, its free radical fighting components to protect the collagen and other tissues as mentioned earlier. Now, oregano is a form of these, er, the herb or spice marjoram, but its Latin name is Oregonum vulgare, which translates literally to wild oregano. So when people talk about wild oregano, they're not necessarily talking about wild crafted because the species is actually called wild oregano in Latin. Uh, oregano oil can help maintain healthy intestinal flora balance and it has free radical neutralizing compounds that again help with immune function. 
our oregano oil soft gels are designed for internal use and we enteric coat it to protect the contents from the stomach and also to prevent you from burping it up that uh, uh, taste. Uh, we're saying there's a minimum of 55% carvacrol, which is a terpene or a uh, scent compound that is in this essential oil. But uh, there's actually more in there. Uh, we actually standardize uh, to a higher level. Uh, this formula includes not only the oregano oil, but the ginger and the fennel. So it, we say intestinal support, but it's a nice digestive. You might notice if you go to an Indian restaurant, they have little uh, bowls of seeds that you could take a few and chew on after dinner. Fennel will usually be one of those, for example. Uh, these herbs help to digest. Uh, they might help to spell some gas as well to help with comfort when you eat. And uh, by the way, just to go back to the oregano for a moment, the uh, when I'm looking at the test results for the oil that we're actually using, we're saying a minimum of 55% carvacrol. I'm seeing a minimum of 70% typically in, in uh, on the test results, and uh, you know 72% would not be an unusual number. Uh, for our products. So we're, we're kind of conservative when we're saying 55% minimum. Uh, our vendors even have a higher number than that in what they're guaranteeing when they send it to us. So peppermint gel is another one, which again has the uh, peppermint oil with ginger and fennel and terracoated. So it's kind of similar to the other one, with, but with peppermint instead. Peppermint's actually stronger as a digestive and in dispelling gas than oregano. Oregano might work more on uh, the microbial uh, environment and things like that. So, you know, similar formulas, but uh, different main actor in them and uh, kind of skews the use a little more. This would be used mostly as a digestive where the oregano might be used more for immunity, uh, uh, supporting probiotic environment, those kind of things. And by enteric coating, these two products can pass through the stomach, release in the intestines where they do their job. So again, you're not gonna burp them up as much. You're gonna get more benefit by protecting these oils from stomach acid and, and stomach digestive processes. And we also have in this category, uh, GI digestive is senna leaves. Uh, Senna does have a warning on there. We're taking one capsule three to four times a day as needed, but there's a bunch of warnings on there. If you get diarrhea, loose stool, abdominal pain, avoid use. Uh, and it's an, a certified organic Senna leaf in here, by the way. So you know, that's interesting. But help, it's a herbal laxative that supports regularity and is one of the gentler laxatives if someone does need a laxative. Of course, we would normally recommend fiber, which was the subject of an earlier training, uh, as a way to bulk up the stool and help regularity. There's other ways to do that. Exercise is another way. But it's gentle, supports regularity for occasional use. And uh, you know, if you can have a good bowel movement, it also helps detoxify because you're carrying some waste out through the bowel, as I mentioned earlier. Now, soothing herbs, uh, there's two items we have with slippery elm, the powder and the capsule version. The capsule says take two capsules one to three times a day. Uh, of course, with a scoop, you can get a teaspoon and get one and a half grams, which is like several capsules into a cup of water, simmer, let cool, add honey, sip and gargle. Uh, you'll often see slippery elm powder used in uh, throat lozenges, cough drops, things like that, as well as uh, products that are soothing to the stomach and digestive tract. So helping coat and soothe GI tract is our label claim there, but uh, you know it, all, it tends to help with the throat as well and, and on the way down. Uh, it has a mucilaginous quality, 
So it does coat and soothe tissues that it comes in contact with, which is uh, the reason it's used in both the uh, throat lozenge type products and the uh, stomach soothing products. And you'll see that in some of our products as well that are lozenges or uh, designed for soothing the stomach. And the uh, last item I have in this category of GI and digestive is the Trafala, uh, actually a product I worked on years ago when we first came out with it, uh, when I was fairly new to helping now with the formulations. And it's a standardized extract of three fruits. One of them is the amla fruit, which you're probably familiar with, that we use amla in things like a base in our uh, pycnogenol 100 milligram product, for example. But these three fruits are a traditional Ayurvedic recipe. We're using them in the proportions that they're typically used in, in that regard. And uh, it's in a tablet form. So these three, three fruits, Harada, Amla, and Bahada, have been used for thousands of years. Digestive cleanser, tonifier, free radical scavenger. There's not a lot of vitamin C in these fruits, including amla, but there's a lot of polyphenols and other compounds like uh, gallic acid, tannic acid, epicatechin, which is similar to the compounds you'll find in, in green tea. Uh, so you, you're seeing these free radical fighting, antioxidant-like compounds uh, in the trifala, but it's also something that's a gentle uh, digestive tonic. It, it kind of helps with peristaltic action of things moving gently through the digestive tract without being a laxative. That's why it's called a tonic. And we have another fairly large section here, men and women's health. So the herbs in here are the black cohosh, the chase tree berry, which uh, is also known as vitex, the Latin name, dong quai, horny goatweed, maca root, pygium, saw palmetto, and stinging nettle root. The leaf is used for respiratory tract and the root is used more for men and women's health. Again, one of those other things, the different parts of the plants have different properties. Now black cohosh, uh, this is something you'll find in a lot of brands and a lot of products. Uh, 80 milligrams standardized to 2.5 total triterpene glycosides. That's, that's fairly common that that would be the, the serving size and the standardization on black cohosh. We've added licorice root which is a very low dose. I estimate it would take about 80 capsules of this to give you enough licorice roots to raise blood pressure based on the toxicology uh, journal I read on that. And uh, it has some Dong Quai root in there as well, the Angelica sinensis. So our recommendation is take one capsule morning, one capsule evening, provides menopause support. Uh, the licorice root is going to be an adaptogenic herb. So it will support the adrenal gland and stresses and, and that kind of thing, cortisol levels. It's a standardized extract and uh, helps healthy response to the natural changes of menopause. And uh, again, the licorice root and dog choir have a supporting role, are not in high doses. Now the chase tree extract, also known as Vitex, uh, this is something we've added the Dong Quai to as well to kind of round out the formula, helping with women's health, endocrine function specifically. Dong Quai is another herb that is commonly used. You just saw it in a couple other formulas, uh, but it's not typically used in oriental medicine by itself. And there's not a lot of studies on it on its own that are conclusive. So I don't really have a lot of science to support it. It's just a traditional use of female support, which is the claim we make. It's a tonic for the female reproductive system and commonly used in combination with other herbs as uh, traditional Chinese medicine would, would normally do or traditional Chinese healing systems would normally use. Now the horny goatweed extract, 
can be used by men or women. We supported that with the maca root. And uh, maca is actually the next product we're going to talk about, strangely enough, because these are alphabetical. I keep hitting them in sequence. But uh, it's epimedium extract uh, standardized to Icarian uh, with the maca root base in there. Uh, maca is actually a really popular product uh, when we get to that. This is a formula you take one a day with a meal. And uh, men's health, we have maca in two different forms. The ones bookending, the one in the middle, are both the so-called raw, gelatinized, certified organic maca roots with specific ratios of different types of maca in there. The one in the middle is just a generic maca root dried. It is not an extract, it's not a concentrate. The one on the left and right are six to one concentrate. Gelatinized actually refers to removing the starch through a cold process, the raw products on the left and right. Uh, but that concentrates at about six times over what the raw root would be. And the one in the middle is the plain maca ground root and nothing, nothing fancy, special, specific. But it is the best seller of the three because it's the one we've had the longest and it's the one with, with probably the best price. And it, you know, it does tend to work also. I mean, I'm, let's not say just because it's not as concentrated or specific types that it's not effective because a lot, our customers will say it is. So these are labeled for supporting sexual well-being, sexual activity, fertility, uh, reproductive health. And these are both studies on the raw gelatinized six to one concentrate. Uh, taking it for four months can help with male fertility support by affecting semen volume, uh, sperm count, and sperm motility. It has not been proved to increase fertility, though the, this would indicate it might. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then also the uh, taking the same kind of dosing for 12 weeks can increase subjective feelings of sexual desire in healthy men of age uh, 21 to 57, male libido in other words. So, you know, that, that, that's, that's pretty good that there's clinical studies on that. Again, with the organic raw gelatinized maca, and you see a lot more detail here on the supplement facts than on the regular maca root. You know, it's more concentrated is the main thing, but also it's from, it's certified organic. Uh, and even though we test all of our botanicals for pesticides and reject ones with high levels, we have stricter standards on the certified organic ones when we're testing for pesticides. So this should be pesticide free, where the other ones would have minimal, very, very low levels of pesticides, if any. And uh, I don't think they typically use pesticides on maca anyway. Uh, but dried roots are 80% black roots, 15% red, purple, and 5% yellow. Some people really care about this and which type of maca is in there because they are reported to have different properties in terms of uh, native use, folklore, et cetera. So uh, that's the deal. We have a powder you can mix in or we have the capsules of the organic raw gelatinized concentrate or we have the ground maca root, which is also a good product. No, you know, nothing wrong with it. And I think most of our customers prefer it because they don't know the difference and they know maca is a good product to take. This is the capsule version. Uh, again, you know, same, same idea. You, you take a, co a couple capsules a day. And this is here because I'm talking about Pygeum. Uh, the next thing we're going to be talking about is saw palmetto. So this product has both. So this has the saw palmetto, which I won't get into a lot of detail because I've got a few slides on that coming up immediately. But it also has African pygeum bark. Uh, I'll mention pygeum is an herb that is on the CITES list, C-I-T-E-S, which is an environmental treaty to protect endangered species. 
So Pygeum is an endangered species and we need a certificate from the country where it's exported saying that the government has certified and, and inspected and made sure that it is not depleting the wild stock of this and is sustainably harvested. So that's important issue for Pygeum. Uh, Pygeum extract, it, it, ten, it tends to have a short-term effect, but we've supported it by adding saw palmetto extract, which, which has really good effects, and pumpkin seed oil, and we'll be discussing those in the next few slides. But I, I did want to introduce the Pygeum there. And uh, this, is, this is from our label claim. They promote healthy urinary tract functions, urinary flow and healthy prostate function. And we're using pumpkin seed oil as a base because it's a soft gel with a nutritional oil. It has essential fatty acids and phytosterols important for men's health. It has similar compounds to what's in saw palmetto, these phytosterols and fatty acids. So pumpkin seeds are well known as something that men might want to consider to support their prostate health, urinary health. So let's switch and talk to saw palmetto because that's probably the best known and uh, one of the best researched items for prostate health. Uh, the expanded German Commission e monograph, as translated by Herbalgram, uh, the journal, says that uh, there's controlled clinical studies, safe and effective use of saw palmetto preparations to support prostate health. It is widely used that way in Europe and the United States. Again, there's fatty acids and phytosterols. That means plant sterols, like cholesterol is an animal sterol. This is a plant sterol. So it has the, the following effects, maintaining healthy hormone status, uh, maintaining healthy immune response, and relaxing the lower urinary tract in men, the, the prostate muscle. And those are the main physical and functional effects of saw palmetto that why we would use it on prostate health, to maintain healthy prostate. So the saw palmetto extract, so we have the berries itself and we have the extract in 160 and 320 milligram amounts. I, uh, the 320 milligram is actually in a vegetarian soft gel, so it, it's the only vegetarian vegan version of the extract we have here. Uh, there are some dry forms in our prostate formulas as well, but uh, they tend to be soft gels with gelatin, so it doesn't help much. So the extract, this is the regular strength one. Uh, there's 80 milligrams of the extract per capsule, serving size is two capsules. A clinical dose would probably be more like four capsules, but it's in a base of pumpkin seed. It's got some zinc added as well. So this is a good everyday preventive uh, maintaining formula where someone is not that worried and just wants to take something to support the prostate. Now, these extracts contain the berry lipids, 85% uh, fatty acids, and they also got phytosterols, including beta-cetosterol, lycopene, and other ingredients that help with prostate health support. Now, we've also got the stinging nettle root extract. Uh, we, we briefly mentioned that earlier. Uh, we say supports prostate health, there's not a lot of science on that. It it's, tends to be more of a historical use. So I really don't have any studies to uh, show specific effects, but uh, this is something that has historically been used and has, has a good folklore basis for making a claim. So next we get into a related category to prostate, the urinary tract support. And we have two products there, the, uh, well, two uh, ingredients, uh, the cranberry, which has two products uh, in this category of the catalog, and the kidney cleanse. Now we do use cranberry in other products, of course. 
So this is a screenshot from our website. Did you know there's tannins, which are polyphenols found in cranberry juice, known as more specifically as proanthocyanidins, that are responsible for cleaning the surface of the urinary tract to allow for healthy elimination. If the urinary tract is smooth and does not have things adhering to it, you're more, it's easier to eliminate everything and to not accumulate any that would latch on to these non-smooth surfaces. So you want the surface to be smooth, slick, slippery, so that things will drain out of there properly. Uh, cranberries ha will help do that based on the uh, polyphenols, but they also have D-mannose, a sugar you're probably familiar with that we also sell, that, in, that have a similar effect to help maintain healthy surfaces of the, ur of the urinary tract. What a lot of people don't know is that other berries have similar properties, including blueberries. Uh, maybe not as strong in these components as cranberries, but, but similar properties. So we have the cranberry caps that have a small amount of vitamin C added. And the serving size is two caps, and you're getting 1,400 milligrams of, of cranberry fruit powder. Take two capsules one to two times daily with food is the, is the recommendation for healthy urinary tract. Cranberry uh, has naturally occurring compounds called proanthocyanidins, which I mentioned earlier, which are also called PACs, to maintain that clean waste stream and healthy urinary tract function. So we have a second product called Cranberry with PAX that is actually a formula that includes the uva ursi extract standardized and a grapeseed extract standardized for polyphenols, which I'm sure you're all familiar with grapeseed extract. So, you know, this is a slightly different uh, version that cleanses the urinary tract, but also has uh, the grapeseed extract uh, to add another polyphenol free radical fighter as well as the uva ursi extract with its effect on the kidneys. And uh, just to mention, again, the National Institutes of Health is citing the FDA announcement a couple of years ago that it's going to permit a label claim that there's limited evidence that daily consumption of specific amounts of cranberry in supplement form can reduce the risk of recurrent uh, urinary tract infections in healthy women who have previously had them. So, you know, this is a claim that could be made with the appropriate disclaimers uh, should a company want to do that. So, again, another uh, infographic from our webpage. What is cranberry, what makes cranberry cool? Supporting women's health, healthy urinary tract, cleansing the bladder, packed with polyphenols, tannins, and phytonutrients and with a historical usage. And the other product we have in this category is Kidney Cleanse. And you can see this is a comprehensive formula. The main ingredient is uva ursi, but it's got parsley and rosemary, fennel, nettle root extract again, olive leaf extract, which has uh, polyphenols, and horsetail herb, also known as shavegrass. So, this is a blend of herbs used to support kidney filtration functions, fluid excretion, and healthy urinary tract environment, supported by these other herbs, including the parsley seed fennel. And the last section I have, we're not making label claims. I might say a little bit about each one, but we are not making structure function claims on these. And some of them you, you're, you might be curious because you know, they have some fairly well-known uh, benefits in the public eye. First is our two black walnut hull products. Uh, the green black walnut hulls simply refers to uh, immature ones that aren't dried basically or, or super ripe. We have the black walnut holes, one capsule twice daily with food. On the left, we have the liquid, fresh green black walnut wormwood complex that also includes clove extract. And the recommendation is to take half to two droppers full twice a day in juice or water, either before meals or at bedtime. 
and best used by increasing over a two week period from low to high dose, skipping a week, don't take any, and then repeat that again. So there's a certain protocol for taking these. Another one we have is the Ojibwa tea. Uh, the Ojibwa people of North America uh, had passed this recipe down and shared it with a Canadian nurse that used it at a clinic, but it was never sold commercially by her or the tribe. Uh, so we have restored the Ojibwa name to it because we're giving credit to the uh, Native American first people tribe that uh, came up with this from the native herbs. Now it's a blend in, in specific ratio of four different herbs, burdock, sheep sorrel, slippery elm, we mentioned earlier, and tur turkey rhubarb root. So uh, this is not rhubarb uh, leaf or, or you know, the, the spine part of the leaf that, that they use to make rhubarb pie or anything. This is rhubarb root, turkey rhubarb root. Uh, burdock is, is actually pretty well known. So it's a alcohol-free four to one extraction. Uh, three of these capsules a day is equivalent to about four ounce of the tea bag formula or two teaspoon, two tablespoons, I'm sorry, of the Ojibwa tea concentrate liquid. So this is the liquid, which is six times the strength of just brewing the tea, so it's a concentrate. But it's the right ratios of herbs by weight to make this concentrate, it's the same herbs there. We also make a version of Ojibwa in our food line, which is a different category. And uh, you might have noticed that the food in, in tea bag form now has a claim that for every two that we sell, we're going to give one to a food pantry or charity, uh, which is an interesting thing, uh, giving back on these products. And, and Ojibwa tea is one of those products in the tea bags. We have the garlics. Uh, super odorless garlic is not available and odorless garlic is in short supply now. Uh, it must be a huge demand for people wanting something that might be related to supporting immune health or digestive health or cardiovascular health or all the things you'll see claims on those kind of things from other brands, not ours. We're actually making no claims here. We've got a garlic oil concentrate on the left. We've got an odorless garlic that's aged on the right, in a, both in soft gels. In the middle, we have the garlic 5000 tablet. I, I like this product a lot. It's one tablet a day. It's equivalent to products by other brands that are s selling uh, similar type products like this. It's an odor controlled garlic that's enteric coated. And you notice there's a claim for a minimum 5,000 microgram allicin per tablet. So we actually have a test for that. So we could test the raw material and the finished product. We're protecting the allicin from stomach acid with the enteric coating, which also helps prevent it from burping up, by the way. So, you know, that's an interesting uh, way to go. But, uh, you know, I, I've taken this one myself, uh, the garlic 5,000. I, I like that a lot. Uh, we also have the eye bright, which you'll find in some of our eye formulas, but uh, there's not enough evidence to make a claim specifically on it. Uh, we could make a claim on licorice root re regarding adaptogenic properties or things like that, but you know you have to give a certain dose for that, and uh, you know licorice root people kind of know what it is and when they want to use it. You know, there, there's not much purpose uh, making a claim. It's not going to increase sales that much. And golden seal root, which is wild crafted in the USA, this is another one that has to be carefully harvested because uh, there are areas where it is endangered. And so you have to use a sustainable harvesting uh, system to be able to do that. So we do have the golden seal root. Uh, golden seal, of course, has berberine and other components in there. But again, we're not standardizing or making a claim. Uh, I, I know my wife le likes to use the golden seal root and things. She'll actually make poultices with it and things like that also. So uh, 
Yeah, it, it's a great herb. It's just we're not making a claim on it. Again, St. John's wort. There's plenty of formulas we make for mood control and things that use St. John's wort. We do not make a claim on the individual product. Same with valerian root. Everybody knows what valerian root is. Most of us knows what it smells like. But again, we're not making specific claims on these. Even though it might be in a sleep formula or a calm formula or, or things like that. Uh, again, go to cola, traditional tonic herb, a red clover. Uh, certain extracts are used, again, for uh, hormonal support for, for women, for example, but this is not one of those products. It's not concentrated to that level. Feverfew, uh, a great product, uh, uh, standardized, but again, no claims, and yucca, which has naturally occurring saponins, Again, we're not making a structure function claim on it. And same with fenugreek. Uh, I know there are brands of fenugreek extracts that are making claims both for men and women and things like that. But uh, for, for our product, we're not making a claim. Burdock root, which we saw in the uh, Ojibwa formula. Uh, again, theoretically, you can make a claim, but we don't. And same with the dandelion root. And so we have the end of our section three. We've gone through the entire section of our catalog that's called herbs and botanicals and gone through that. A lot of these items are in other categories in our catalog as well. And a lot of them are in other formulas in our product line as well. So uh, this is just taking the items in one catalog section and giving you some background on them that's hopefully helpful and educational. And with that, I thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Neil, for an excellent presentation and an excellent series on all of our herbs in the catalog. It was very, very interesting. Um, if you did miss parts one and two, as I mentioned earlier, you can uh, find them on our website, nowfoods.com forward slash webinars, or on the Now YouTube channel. Lots of great, great information to find out what areas of support different herbs are good for, uh, different whole herbs versus standardized extracts. So good information, so check us out there. Uh, we will not be taking questions today due to time constraints. However, if you did submit a question, we will respond to you by email, so watch your email for that. And I'll hang out for just a minute or two. If you do still want to submit something, go ahead. And once again, we will get that question and reply to you by email. This wraps up our series on herbs, but we will be back next month on September the 15th. And we will be talking about free radical scavengers, um, another topic that we haven't covered in the past I think 10 years that we've been doing these uh, retailer webinars. So thank you again, Neil, for uh, excellent information. And thank you everyone for joining us. And we will look forward to having you back with us in September. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.